Good morning everybody. Today I made myself a few notes because I want to talk about League B and how things are there. Um, again, I have not necessarily seen highlights of any League B play, but I have put down the standings and some remarkable results and I really want to um, put those together in some thoughts and then we'll see where League D stands and if there's some time left uh, let's run through the other groups that I have more in my head. League D Group 1 uh, is the one that's already decided uh, thanks to Georgia winning everything. Uh, so far they have 12 wins, a uh, goal differential of 9 to nothing, so they haven't even conceded a goal. Um, 12 points, Kazakhstan has 5 points, they at least got a win now in the last uh, round. And then we have Andorra having already 2 points, I think those 2 points came even against, uh, they are not, uh, came against Kazakhstan and Latvia of course because they were all playing, uh, drawing each other. And yeah, Andorra is last also with two points. I have to say I'm a little bit surprised that Latvia is not doing better. I have some faint memories that Latvia was actually uh, a decent Baltic team. At least one that gave Austria a lot of trouble in the past. So yeah, um, I think we lost twice in Latvia in qualifying. Uh, one that killed us for Euro 96 where we could have easily made the playoff if we beat Latvia and the other one uh, I think was for the World Cup qualifying for 2010 where after beating France 3-1 we lose in Latvia of course 2 nothing. I mean because it's Austria so yeah um, <laughs> you see my pain <laughs> but you know uh, I'm talking a lot about the Austria. Austria football soul is kind of, you know, you for the team if they're playing good, if not, you know, basically do not care too much. I mean, you can, it doesn't hurt as much as it does for other nations. So yeah, but that is uh, League D1 taken care of. Let's look at the next one. League D2, that's a whole lot more interesting um, because the big two teams in there are Belarus and Luxembourg and at the weekend, uh, Luxembourg lost 1-0 to Belarus, uh, who actually were before that in um, worse shape. So uh, Luxembourg had actually two big results. I wrote down 4 nothing against Moldova. This is a huge result because Moldova usually doesn't lose by a lot of points, uh, by a lot of goals. They always manage to have 0-0 zero, zero draws or something like that, uh, you know, just losing one nothing. They rarely get uh, get a beatdown. Well, they got a beatdown against Luxembourg, and Luxembourg, uh, as of late, is kind of developing, a, I don't want to say a big nation, but you know, they're having uh, quite some success. Remember, they got a 0-0 zero, zero against France. They also, um, now Dudelange is in the Europa League. So maybe there's something growing in Luxembourg. On the other side, Austria had actually a relatively easy win in a friendly though uh, earlier this year. So again, coming back to Austria. So yeah, so that seemed like um, Belarus has the um, advantage, but then uh, they again only manage a draw, I think, against Moldova. I think they have um, Two zero zeros against uh, um, Moldova. Belarus, Moldova twice played a goalless draw, and that actually undid now the lead for Belarus. Luxembourg, of course, won against uh, San Marino. It's sad to see that even in League D, everyone is beating up on San Marino. Uh, but the group is actually that's the one where San Marino had the least chance of actually achieving anything. Uh, Luxembourg, Mo Belarus, and Moldova. Uh, kind of pesky teams, the ones that I know that when I'm watching a qualification group I don't want to play any of these because it's always a tough uh, matchup. Yeah, and Luxembourg has to say, has to be said, made a 4 nil. yeah, I already said, has a 4 nil against Moldova. Moldova has actually very interesting in four games, they have a 2-0 win against uh, Luxembourg, 4-0 loss to 
to a win against San Marino, for a loss uh, to Luxembourg and then 2-0-0 against Belarus. <sighs> Round 5 is the big one, Luxembourg against Belarus. Uh, if Luxembourg wins, they win, they gain promotion. If a uh, draw, they will be there in a better position. Um, although they would have to play Moldova uh, one more time. And other than that, if Belarus wins, I think Belarus looks pretty. So overall, um, yeah, it's an interesting group. We're gonna see where this one is going. Next one. Um, the third group. I would actually uh, think that Luxembourg probably will get the start on that one. But all remains to be seen. Wow, they're building the, the bridge is now covering here where I'm driving. They're building a new bridge here and it's kind of interesting. It started earlier this year and it's very interesting to see how um, a bridge is actually built because more or less every day that I drive to work, I can see the progress and it's really uh, something interesting. They have already the ramp on this side, the bridge will be on the other side. Uh, and yeah, a lot of stuff going on in two years. This should be ready. Uh, now a year and a half from now. But yeah, I'm not gonna talk about bridge building here. I'm gonna talk about uh, third group of League D, group 3, maybe give me with uh, where the big teams of course are Kosovo and Azerbaijan, but I also thought that this is kind of a sort of even group because there are also the Faroe Islands in there, um, which again Austria knows Faroe Islands are a really pesky opponent. Um, I think the first competitive match of the Faroe Islands was against Austria, played in Landskrona in Sweden, of all places, and Austria lost that one. Coming right off a disappointing World Cup in Italy. Go figure. Uh, that is one of the two worst losses that Austria ever had. The other one, of course, the 9 0 annihilation by Spain in 1999. So the 90s were not kind to Austria soccer despite making the two World Cups and since then kind of going down. But no, uh, the group at the moment, the Kosovo, is leading with 8 points ahead of Azerbaijan with 6. And um, the Faroe Islands have 4 points thanks to a 3-1 win over Malta in round 1. And Malta has two points already, uh, which are from two draws against Azerbaijan. I think we're both 1-1 one, one draws. And that basically is the reason why Azerbaijan is not currently uh, closer. I think they drew, uh, drew with, uh, with Kosovo uh, at home. And the draws against um, Malta basically uh, prevent them from being level with Kosovo at the moment. Uh, yeah, they drew 0 0. Well, the 0 0 was in the first round. Uh, the final game being with Kosovo and Azerbaijan is in the last round, um, of course, because they needed to do some rescheduling because the Faroe Islands have played all their home games already because of weather. You cannot have in November a game on the Faroe Islands. Uh, weirdly enough. So therefore, maybe the Faroe Islands have a little bit of a better record. They got a draw at home to Kosovo, but lost at home to uh, Azerbaijan also 3-0. So uh, it's a big result for Azerbaijan, to be honest. And now the Faroe Islands have to play uh, in Malta, of course. And then uh, they, I think they play Kosovo, I think. Uh, where, where, where it's at. Um, I actually saw this was the first game of the Nations League, so I saw a little bit of Azerbaijan against Kosovo, which kind of was this, oh, there's a new uh, competition, but I quickly saw, eh, this is not the World Cup necessarily. The World Cup doesn't have great play. But yeah, so we have Kosovo 8, Azerbaijan 6, Faroe Islands 4, Malta 2. I would 
think that Malta could catch up with the Faroe Islands if they win at home, although never underestimate the Faroes. And uh, Kosovo against Azerbaijan, that's going to be the big fixture uh, in the last round that probably will decide who will go on unless Azerbaijan now drops points uh, to the Faroe Islands at home. Uh, and Kosovo wins against Malta away. Both kind of toughish. Uh, results but not beyond Kosovo and it, I would actually say Kosovo is probably in the better position of making it to League C which is kind of remarkable because they just started playing in, um, in UEFA competitions uh, they were quali qualifying for, in the qualifying for the World Cup and uh, that was the first time that the Kosovo actually played so that's kind of interesting. Also interesting I find is the FIFA code for the Kosovo with the KVX, I think. And the X doesn't make much sense to me, but maybe because of the Albanian language that's spoken there. It's one of the weirder languages uh, in Europe. Uh, it's very interesting uh, lang linguistically. Of course, there are three groups that dominate, which are the Slavic, the Germanic and of course the Romance languages but then there are those pockets of weird languages pop popping up that have no relation to anything so yeah and Albanian is one of these and that leads us to the last group in League D which in a way is the most surprising one uh, and that there have been results that I absolutely uh, was happy about. Um, of course, it's the group with Gibraltar, who made six points in the last two games. Six points for Gibraltar. Those are the first ever points that Gibraltar made. I don't know if they did any massaging because, you know, the British colony and maybe they got some uh, players that found the Gibraltar roots. roots. I don't know if anything like that happened or it's just a remarkable turn of events. Either way, it's, those are two amazing results. Now, before I go deeper into the group, uh, politics is kind of heavy in this one. Uh, there's of course the country that should not be named in there. Um, uh, the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. I usually refer to them as Macedonia. I know this rubs some people wrong. Uh, Firearm also seems weird to me, but maybe let's stick with that for political purposes. Uh, don't want to get a lot of hate mail on my channel. It is, I, you know, I kind of understand both sides. A little bit. I watched some YouTube video videos on the Macedonia question. Um, it is true that the original name of Macedonia is firmly rooted in uh, what's now Greek history and Alexander the Great and uh, Macedonia is so openly appropriating um, that history I think is not correct. On the other side, uh, there was a kingdom of Greater Macedonia where now what's probably Northern Macedonia uh, has some legitimacy to it. But um, as it is always in the Balkans, things are never straightforward and it's a lot of taunting going on all sides. And yeah, it is the hottest place in Europe. Uh, that's all I want to say to that. I will refer to it in this video as um, Firum for now. Uh, Northern Macedonia might become a reality. I hope something like that will happen because this naming, this dispute is one of the, I think, more appalling things in happening in Europe in the past 20 years that, that a solution cannot be found. So this is, uh, it always bugged me, it always bugged me. But yeah, Firearm is top in this group, um, looked actually quite good and then they lost uh, 0 uh, 4 nothing to Armenia. 
uh, uh, just recently, now around four. They won at home to Armenia uh, two nil. So yeah, that puts Armenia a little bit back. However, Armenia lost one nil at home to Gibraltar, and that's why Gibraltar is currently ahead in the standings. So we have Firearm. We have Gibraltar at six, Armenia at six, and Liechtenstein has also three points. Uh, it's an amazing group in a way, because Liechtenstein is also one of those uh, really, really micro states that are actually uh, not that bad. They get their occasional points here and there. So uh, you gotta give it to Liechtenstein. So yeah, and I think Liechtenstein got their win, I wanna say against uh, Gibraltar as well. So Gibraltar, Liechtenstein, Liechtenstein, Gibraltar traded points. Uh, Firearm, Macedonia, Macedonia, however you want to call them, uh, won everything before that but then lost 4-0 to Armenia. So should Armenia they at the moment look probably to be, to be their biggest threat. Uh, should they win out, then um, they would probably make it through. But I don't know. This group seems open. I don't know what to make of Gibraltar. On the on, honestly, the one nil win in Armenia could weigh heavily. And to me, this seems like a three-horse race. And then there's still Liechtenstein in there. Uh, that's the one group where I don't wanna make really a prediction. I think probably ahead of the uh, draw, I would have said Armenia, maybe Farum. One of those two will uh, make it. Uh, now that uh, six points by Gibraltar completely threw a monkey wrench in there, and I'm very curious to see how this one plays out. And I maintain. Liechtenstein can take points of, out of any of these opponents. So uh, to me this group is wide open. I would probably say Liechtenstein is out of the promotion race but can play a good part and maybe get even a few points um, winning. Uh, uh, points winning or uh, drawing against some opponents. So it will be very interesting to watch this play out. This is the group where I don't want to make predictions. I have a hunch that Armenia might make it, but they still need some help. Because uh, if Firem wins out against Liechtenstein and uh, Gibraltar, they will go to, so, through. So they have a slightly better um, way, but I just don't see it quite panning out uh, that easily, especially, as I said, I don't know Gibraltar, and if Gibraltar does anything, they, it might be them. Very interesting one. Maybe, let, let me say, it, just because uh, the way things pan out, maybe Firem will make it. And maybe we'll talk about Northern Macedonia soon, although uh, as far as I can see, that vote is not going to pass because of tensions. That was my League D roundup. Notes are a good thing to have, even while driving at the mirror on the steering wheel. Um, let's run through the other in League C. Uh, we have, of course, the Israel Scotland group. I also think that Israel will make it to B. Um, they have to win against Scotland. Scotland will need to beat Israel. Um, but that's the only, Israel has only one game left and that's the one game and if they get a point out of that one uh, it's done and dusted whereas Scotland still has to play Albania so I really think and in Albania which I don't think they will necessarily get the result for Albania this is also a do, and do, do or die game if they beat Scotland uh, then they have six points but they don't have the tiebreaker against um, Scotland. Uh, uh, against Israel, and they may have, may have it against Scotland, and then that, that's got, that could be a really messy group. If it was all home wins so far, so it'll be interesting to see. I still think Israel can get this one. Uh, would at the moment, uh, 
put my money on Israel because they have the better, they have the better position. Uh, the group with uh, Greece, Bulgaria, uh, no, Greece and Hungary and Finland, I think is all Finland's now. Finland will make that one. Um, Bulgaria, Norway, <clears throat> I want Bulgaria, but I think it will be Norway just because Bulgaria has to play in Cyprus and I don't think they will do much there. Um, Norway looked better. Overall, it's a little bit more damning even because if Bulgaria would have won in Norway, they would have sealed up the group. It's as easy as they do. Even a draw would have put them in super comfy position. Now it is tough. I'm afraid this will go Norway's way. Then uh, Serbia, Romania, I still think, although Romania doesn't look a better thing, I still think this will be Serbia who will go through. Uh, League B, um, I don't do them now in order. Um, the Russia will of course go through, Ukraine is already through. I think um, the relegation in both groups will be, I think, probably Sweden in the Russia group. Way it looks like right now although um, the Turkey game Sweden has two games still and I think they could could could, could get a result uh, will be tough will be tough um, the Turkey Sweden game will be a big one and then uh, Ukraine I think it will get Slovakia I think Austria will get the one point that will um, prevent them from promotion but I, I think it will be um, Bosnia I will prevent re 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 relegation, but it will be Bosnia who will get the promotion, Northern Ireland being relegated, and I think Denmark uh, will get the points to be for promotion and that will be um, Ireland relegated. Two Irish teams going down seemingly. Although uh, with Austria's record in Northern Ireland, you never know. And then Group A, I already told you the four, I think it will be uh, Spain, Portugal, Belgium and France who will make the final four. Um, Germany will probably get relegated. I think Iceland is already relegated, Poland is already relegated. So the only ones missing is Croatia or England. And that group is wide open in a way. I still think it will be Croatia, uh, but two wins for Croatia and they win the group. But at the moment I would say Croatia and wearing an England shirt, I... I don't quite see England making it through, but it remains to be seen. It is possible now if um, Spain manages only a draw, then England needs to win against Croatia and then they are through. But I still think that Spain will get the result they need, depending whether Isco will come back or not. I think Isco is the big one that kills Real Madrid and kills uh, Spain a little bit for not being there, but you know, a panics operation. What can you do? Uh, I didn't make now my relegation picks for uh, League C because it's a little bit more complicated there. Um, actually, the way it goes, I think that the group with Scotland, Albania and um, Israel, whoever will be last there might not get relegated because they are so constantly, consistently winning. Whereas in the other groups, it's a little bit more clear that there are teams that are in true trouble. Well. Let me know how you th see things. I, again, League D, I think, is, is in a way the most interesting because those teams really need to play each other. And I know this is for hardcore fans in a way. I have not watched games, but I've watched the results and it's so... I love that, they've, that those small nations are playing at each other. I think League D is the one reason why we needed the Nations League. Really, really, really. Give me a thumbs up if you liked the video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of this and I will talk to you soon. Bye.